Earlier this year, I stayed at the iconic Fairmont Banff Springs, and I had a surprisingly great time. It was very expensive, however, and that got me thinking on what their other luxury hotels are like. Specifically this one, the Chateau Frontenac in Quebec City. Perhaps Canada's most iconic hotel, with the reputation of it being the most photographed hotel in the world. So let's see if it lives up to all of this hype as we check in during the holidays and stay in their highest level of luxury, Fairmont Gold. But most importantly, let's see if it's worth the steep price. Like all of Quebec City, this hotel has a vast and rich history. Its central land within the city of course had multiple uses over many decades and even centuries. The front neck ultimately came to fruition as a 170 room luxury hotel in 1893. And just like the Banff Springs Hotel, it was developed by Canadian Pacific Railway. Over the next few decades, its popularity would warrant multiple expansions with other new wings. Most significant of which was a central tower, which was completed in 1924, that would span over 17 floors and feature a striking steeped roof. In fact, this whole structure was a gorgeous example of chateau design, with elements of French Renaissance architecture, truly cementing this hotel as an icon of the city. Its popularity wouldn't even be deterred by a devastating fire in 1926. Wait, wasn't that the same year the Banff Springs Hotel burned down? Coincidence? Yeah, probably. Even all the way to 1993, it saw another expansion with the addition of more hotel rooms and an indoor pool. This capped off the hotel with 610 hotel rooms. With such an iconic hotel that has been around for over 125 years, it of course has seen some notable uses too. It's hosted pretty much every Canadian Prime Minister, kings and queens of the British monarchy, it's hosted various world leader summits, and even played a hand in World War II, where this very conference room was the location where Winston Churchill, Theodore Roosevelt, and Canadian Prime Minister William Lyon Mackenzie King had planned both the Battle of Normandy and following the war, mapped out what post-war Europe would look like. And of course, on top of all of that, the hotel has hosted many celebrities and even played the backdrop to film and television, like Alfred Hitchcock's I Confess, and even a Korean TV drama called Goblet. So the hotel is obviously very beautiful, and the building itself is flanked by parks, a massive boardwalk area, and beautiful historic streets. It all feels so surreal, and it's hard to believe that you're still in eastern Canada. But I guess it's why Quebec City is often touted as the most authentically French city outside of France. So it's not hard to believe that the hotel is now designated as a national historic site of Canada. Funny enough, even though I'm from Ontario, I actually only knew about this hotel as a kid from Epcot's Canada Pavilion, which is what the centerpiece structure is based on. So it's always been an icon of Canada, and ever since I first visited Montreal, I have fallen in love with the unique culture, architecture, and people of Quebec. And Quebec City has always been on my bucket list. So let's check in and head up to our room, which is a Fairmont Gold One King Bed City View, the cheapest gold room they offer. I think this room, upon first impressions, is very comfortably appointed. It feels warm and quite cozy, especially with this spectacular, unobstructed view over downtown Quebec City. The 16th floor, where we're located, is just one from the top, and we're actually just at the base of the steeped roof. So we have this unique iron grating that covers the window. The windows actually open up quite generously here, and watching the Parliament building light up is just a real treat. All of the materials feel solid, and the overall design is certainly higher end. The bed was comfortable with very soft and premium feeling sheets. The bathroom too was cozy and felt very luxurious. It was mostly cladded with real marble, not the fake ceramic stuff at Disney's Riviera, and had very luxurious appointments like this leather wrapped tissue box and rose scented bath product. The shower didn't have a rainfall head, which was a little disappointing for this price point, though it did have a very strange shower nozzle that I've never seen before. The floor was also not heated, which would have been a nice touch, again for this price point and for the fact that this is in a colder climate. Overall, the room is very nice, though a little small. But I think that can be forgiven based on the fact that this is a very old structure and that they are limited architecturally on how large these rooms can actually be. Something I instantly noticed while spending time in this room, however, is just how much better the Fairmont Banff Gold Room was. There, it just felt a lot more elevated with many more modern luxury touches. Now, in fairness, this room is generally cheaper than the Banff Hotel, 
so I suppose it makes sense. However, there are some larger problems that I don't like here. The TV, for example, looks like it's from 2011 and has a very prevalent and very annoying flickering issue no matter what is being played on it. That is simply not acceptable for a luxury club-level hotel room. There are some other annoyances too. The Wi-Fi speed was pretty lackluster, and unlike the Fairmont Banff with a modern fridge drawer, this is a fully stocked fridge with no room to put your own stuff, all filled with overpriced beverages. There's also snacks provided as well as premium beverages above the cabinet that are on these tacky pressure plates. According to the in-room menu, this wine is $50, and I'm really hoping the bottle of water beside it, because it's not exactly listed on here, is not $9. That would be absolutely absurd. At least the provided tea and coffee are complimentary. Really, all of this feels a bit greedy, considering this is the highest category the hotel offers. Not to mention the access you get to a lounge, where most of this stuff is already complimentary. I'm just under the belief, if a hotel is charging you significantly more for an elevated room that is supposed to come with complimentary food and beverages, in this case double the normal room rate, it should not have the same greedy hotel practices to try and squeeze every last dollar out of you. The Banff property doesn't do this. I hope these anti-consumer practices are retired. Okay, so the room is nice, but not as nice as other luxury hotel rooms. But this is Fairmont Gold after all, which means you get access to the Gold Lounge. This gold lounge is located on the 14th floor of the front neck, and also features its own gold check-in desk and concierge. Here, they serve breakfast in the morning, evening hors d'oeuvres, and a very limited single-option dessert plate after 8pm. Otherwise, some light snacks are left out throughout the day, and you can always make or have someone make yourself a tea or coffee, or just grab a to-go drink from the refrigerator. The quality of the food was pretty good, and the selection was also good, but not great. I have to say once again though, after experiencing the Gold Lounge at the Fairmont Banff, this truly pales in comparison, both in the size of the lounge and the selection, which felt like it was half of what the Banff Lounge offers. Missing here too was the extensive drink options like smoothies and build your own hot chocolates, all very premium offerings which were sorely missed here. A full bar is also available to guests, however, all alcohol is at an extra charge. However, it is nice that the friendly lounge staff will make whatever you want that is on offer. Okay, I want to quickly thank this video sponsor, Scentbird. Both myself and Emmy are actually pretty excited about this sponsor, but especially Emmy since she's actually really into fragrance. Scentbird allows you to try all types of high quality name brand perfumes at an affordable price. You select what you want to try out and they'll deliver it right to you in these really handy, generously sized vials. Perfect, in fact, for traveling. This month, Emmy chose two scents that she's been wanting to try out for a while, but have been hard to track down. Eccentric Molecule 2 and Aqua de Parma Fico de Melfi. I chose to try Pegasus from Parfums de Marly, which was perfect for me as I knew I enjoyed the brand, but could never get myself to buy it as a full bottle since they could be as high as $350. Emmy ended up loving Fico de Amalfi, as she's always been drawn to fragrances with fig as a note, and plans for this to be the perfect scent to take on her upcoming trip to Italy. But if you're unsure as to what you would like, well there's a whole discovery tab on the Scentbird website, and there you can find new scents that can fit your own taste. So if you want to try it out for yourself, Scentbird has provided me with a special code that will give you an exclusive 55% off your first month, which is a little over $7, which is really pretty good. You can go to Scentbird.com and use code BRIGHTSUN, or click the link in the description below. Aside from our gold room, there are plenty of other room categories to choose from. Since the architecture of the building is so varied, and since there are 610 hotel rooms, each one is going to be slightly different in size and shape. I actually asked the marketing team there if I could have a peek into some other rooms, and they actually agreed. Towards the bottom of their offerings, you have a one queen deluxe courtyard view. There's a lot of room here, and maybe it's a little bland looking, though the bathroom is almost as nice as the gold bathroom. 
There's also a signature One King, this one with a water view and a fireplace, uniquely inside the turret. There's various junior suites, one bedroom suites, gold level suites, and then there's the executive suites, named and themed after famous figures who have stayed here in the past. We got to see the Churchill suite, in this case ornately decorated for Christmas. It has Winston Churchill artifacts behind art, a large living room and dining room, a beautiful master bedroom, and an ensuite with a freestanding bathtub. It's very beautiful, but also very expensive. If you want to see a full walkthrough of this room, I have it over on my Instagram, at Travel. Now, if you're wanting to find food or drink outside of the lounge and elsewhere in the hotel, well, the Frontenac has many options to choose from. Aside from a full Starbucks that's open to the public on the boardwalk deck, there are three main restaurants and two main bars. Place du Front is open for breakfast, San Bistro for more casual lunch or dinner, and then the fine dining, prefix-only Champlain restaurant. Truthfully, all of these restaurants are absolutely stunning particularly the Champlain, which has truly breathtaking ceilings. However, all of these restaurants, as you probably can imagine, are on the pricier side, with the Champlain's highest prefix menu coming in at $189 a person. If you're more interested in drinks, well, the 1608 bar will cost you several organs, with cocktails raising as high as $35. Though, like the restaurants, the sticker shock can be alleviated somewhat by how stunning the space is. It's gorgeous, and Fairmont seems to always nail these environments. Now there is one brand new bar called Ilia that is only open in the summers on their outdoor pool terrace. Speaking of which, the Frontenac has a full gym facility, a pretty nice pool, and a small spa. As for other amenities, there are two main shops that line the, in our case, Christmas tree concourse off the main lobby. They sell high quality and even handmade items, which is pretty cool to see. Perhaps the best amenity this hotel offers, though, is the history itself. From the moment you walk inside, the ornate wood-lined lobby is both historic and impressive. It's lit by various chandeliers and antique sconces, which all create an authentic ambience like no other. There's plenty of nooks to explore, from this weird Spanish-inspired staircase to the massive and grand halls with hand-painted ceilings. Many trim pieces are embedded with gold-plated emblems, and it's just all so impressive. I especially love how the hotel embraces that history and seeks to educate. On the boardwalk level, there's this winding museum of sorts that really gets rather thorough and even presents artifacts. Up on the conference room level, there are all types of photos accompanied by historical facts. I absolutely love this, and you could easily spend several hours perusing the halls and educating yourself taking it all in. And this continues when you step outside the hotel, too. It's easy to see why people call this the most photographed hotel in the world. I mean, it's absolutely stunning, and the more you look at it, the more architectural detail you discover. It's absolutely magnificent. Now, I know everyone yells at me when I don't try the hotel's food out for myself, but the truth is, there are so many highly rated restaurants in the area that I would be insane not to try some local establishments out. Some of the restaurants we tried out of the hotel were Maison Le Venois and Sepristri Champlain, with some drinks at Pub St. Patrick and the incredible Bar Les Yeux Bleu, which is built into the side of the hill and has exposed stone wrapping all the way around it. It also has some of the best bar food I've ever had. But then there's the city streets of Old Quebec in of itself. Just a few minutes walk from the hotel in every direction is stunning. The cobblestone streets meander in different directions, plazas with grand churches line the streets, every building has a shop or a restaurant on the ground level, there's a department store, I mean it's just a pedestrian's paradise. A total walkable city. One that truly feels like it was plucked straight from Europe and constructed in North America. But you may also notice that the Chateau Frontenac is perched on top of a steep hill. Well, again, just steps from the property, you can take a rather easy set of stairs down, or the Funicula, which first opened in 1879. We went during the Christmas season in Old Quebec. And just when you thought the city couldn't get any more magical, the streets in this area are straight out of a movie. The light layer of snow over the cobblestone, the Christmas trees lining the streets, the color of the storefronts, the lights draping over them, the quietness of it all in the evening, it's just truly magical. It is the very definition of a winter wonderland. 
There are fire pits that seem to be lit all day and all night, and while most shops do close at around 5pm, it's certainly worth the stroll through this village at night. It's a shockingly beautiful area, all with the Chateau Frontenac looming above you, never too far away. Perhaps the most surreal street in this area is the central Christmas tree, sitting out front of the Notre Dame de Victoire, a church first built in 1723. This plaza might also look familiar, as it was the stand-in for a little town in France in Steven Spielberg's 2002 film Catch Me If You Can. So all of this is fantastic, but let's talk price, and more specifically how much I paid to stay here. For one night in our base level gold room, it came to $571 with taxes and resort fee, but that's without parking. From what I've been able to gather, this is one of the cheapest rates this room is sold at. In fact, I got it on a Canadian resident discount offer Fairmont had been promoting. As for the more standard room categories, well, the lowest they start at are around $319 a night before taxes and fees. This deluxe courtyard view not far from it. Signature rooms like this can be had for around $440, and a junior suite at around $470. Gold rooms start at $539, and the larger themed suites, like the Churchill suite, they are, on average, around $4,000 a night, which is definitely not worth it. These are also the base prices for the least desirable times to travel, basically the winter. Over the summer, you better believe these rates begin to climb, with a standard room costing at least $700, and my gold room reaching nearly $1,200 all before tax. Now Fairmont is a part of the Accor loyalty program, so all of these rooms, except for the larger suites, are eligible for 5-10% to off. And of course they do have special offers here or there, which is again what I took advantage of for this trip, and it's how I got my gold room for less than the base rack rate. You can also book these through points by going to Accor, but that's a process I'll leave to you. Really, that's pretty expensive. But in fairness, the Frontenac is only one of two real five-star hotels in Quebec City. The other is intriguing though. It's called the Le Capitole Hotel, and it's of course not as iconic as the Fairmont, but it is in a pretty good location, has a beautiful facade, and has modern, luxurious-looking rooms and amenities. A standard room there can be had for as little as $255. Now, if you want to stay central in the old Quebec area, there are tons of tiny boutique hotels scattered all across the historic streets, many of which have really good reviews and can be booked for as little as $120 like the Hotel Manoir Morgan, which is basically as central as the Fairmont. Some other nearby hotels, like the Auberge de Place Dame, can be as low as $284 during the peak of summer. So when you compare it to the $700 plus across the street, well, that gets a little hard to justify. So with all of this in mind, let's give the Fairmont Chateau Frontenac an actual rated score. We'll start with the location. You're staying here to see Old Quebec City, and you couldn't be any more central. It's an easy 10 out of 10. Amenities are pretty good. You have all the basics, multiple food options, and a lot of great historical points of interest. However, the food options, apart from Starbucks, are very, almost prohibitively expensive. And there is a lack of complimentary options, as historical tours are at an extra cost. It's a 7 out of 10. Luxury and quality is pretty good. The hotel is kept up well, though the luxury gold offerings are lacking compared to rivals and even other Fairmont hotels. I'll give it a 6 out of 10. Service was also very good, but again, at this price point and compared to others, it was lacking in a few areas that would warrant a 10. At the Banff Hotel, for example, we received welcome chocolate and a personalized note, which was absent here. So I would give it an 8 out of 10. Finally, there's value. I'm judging this on what we paid for our trip and not what it could be over the summer, which if that were the case, it would probably be much lower. Taking into account on what we received, the quality of everything and its location, I would give it a 7 out of 10, as it is on the cheaper end of when it comes to luxury club level rooms. It's also all about supply and demand here. There are barely any other 5 star luxury hotels, and this is the only one that offers a club level. That brings the total score to 38 out of 50, which is 3 away from the Fairmont Banff, though 15 points ahead of Disney's contemporary resort club level offering. No matter what, this is a spectacular hotel, and in some ways, I have to understand why Fairmont is charging this much for their room. 
years. It's a vast building that's over a century old, and it must take a lot to keep it up as a luxury hotel. If you plan on spending some time here in the winter, I think it is worth spending at least a night here to experience this unique atmosphere. In the summer, however, you're probably better off supporting a boutique hotel somewhere close by for much cheaper. As for the gold category, well, I think I would keep my $200 premium and either save it or spend it elsewhere in the city, as the gold offerings here simply aren't worth it. But I will say that you absolutely need to come to Quebec City. Christmas or not, it's a beautiful place that is unlike anything else in North America. I absolutely loved my time here, and I truly cannot wait to return. Since at the time of this video's release, we are coming to the end of the year, and I just wanted to say thank you so much for tuning into this channel to watch my videos. I've always had an interest in the hospitality industry, and of course, a lot of opinions on it. So by you watching and supporting my content, allowing me to review these places without a filter, well, I don't know, it's just really cool that you find my reviews valuable to at least some degree. I should also note that thanks to sponsors like Scentbird, they also help these videos you know, exist. Again, promo links are in the description below. But all of this is exactly what I set out to do, so seriously, thank you so much for supporting this content. If you want to follow along with my other adventures that maybe don't make it to YouTube, go follow my Instagram account as well. And of course, if you're not subscribed to my main channel where I make short documentaries, well, you should probably do that too. Anyway guys, my name is Jake, and thank you very much for watching.